ZIIA for the uh, opportunity. And secondly, I would like to thank all of you for coming to this event. Obviously not to hear me singing, but uh, to hear me sharing with you about uh, Indonesia and the Pacific. Uh, I feel so very much honored with the presence of uh, so many distinguished guests tonight. I see at least two ambassadors, great colleagues of mine, ambassadors of France and ambassador of Swiss, who can make it today. And I see a member, and I see a good friend from MFAT, and uh, some friends from uh, academic and also uh, students. So it's, it's a great honor for me to be uh, standing here and able to share with you about the priorities of Indonesia being part of the Pacific. Well, it's a very big question that lingering around here on why Indonesia claims to be Pacific and why Indonesia uh, has been playing all efforts to be recognized as part of the Pacific and Indonesia has been doing anything that we can to uh, help uh, prosper the people of the Pacific by uh, developing the economy of uh, the country and territories in the regions. Now, because uh, the time given for me is quite limited, so to speak, uh, I have prepared some pages of slides so that it can direct me uh, to do the great presentations in order to meet the time that has been allocated uh, to me. My background was very colorful. I was a TV man. I was a host of quite a number of uh, uh, TV programs, and one of which was Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> and I hosted some events of air as well. And what is interesting, I'm also a country singer. Yes, American country singer. <laughs> Very far different uh, uh, from my background. I'm, I'm so proud uh, to be able to uh, do all those, including being ambassador of Indonesia in this very beautiful and very important country uh, to Indonesia. There are so many aspects that we can uh, develop later uh, during the question and answer on the connection between Indonesia and New Zealand besides Indonesia and the Pacific. So, uh, the first uh, uh, slide, does it work? Karim, please help. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, if you see this map, you see very clearly the position of Indonesia. So Indonesia is one of the largest archipelagos in the world, a country of 270 million that live in most of the 17 islands that we have. And this archipelago is flanked by two big oceans, Pacific Oceans and Indian Oceans. So if you look at us from the Indian Oceans, like most of the people in the world do, then we are always perceived as ASEAN countries, the biggest player in ASEAN, and more and more important player in Asia. And that is not wrong, because Indonesia has been doing all efforts to uh, play in this part of the oceans. But if you look at us from the Pacific Oceans, then you see five provinces of Indonesia that are strategically, uh, strategically and geographically located in the Pacific Oceans. Hence, we can be called as part of the Pacific. So we have five big provinces namely Papua, West Papua, Maluku, West, and then uh, North Maluku, and then uh, East Nusa Tenggara, or widely known as West Timor. Those five provinces are located in the Pacific Oceans. So being a country, being an archipelagic, which is flanked by two big oceans, then by itself, Indonesia has, has a lot of interest to cover both uh, regions. 
So Eastern Indonesia, as you see here, bordered by North Pacific countries and territories, and South Pacific, and South, and, uh, South Pacific in this case uh, PNG, which shares uh, the same islands as uh, uh, Papua. Now, because uh, we are part of the Pacific, the people, I mean, our brothers and sisters, Indonesians that live on those five provinces are predominantly Melanesians and Polynesians. You will see our Melanesian friends, they live in Papua, West Papua, and East Nusa Tenggara or West Timor. And you'll see our Polynesian brothers and sisters, they live in Maluku. And we also have Micronations, our brothers and sisters that live in North Sulawesi. So this is the uh, uh, geographic and demographic uh, facts about Indonesia in the Pacific. Now, because we are, we are geographically uh, located in the Pacific, and the people that live in those five provinces are in fact Melanesian and Polynesians, that's why we share a lot of things in common. Let's say language. We have so many words which are widely spoken in those five provinces and also other provinces in Indonesia which have the same pronunciations and also the same meaning. For instance, when you say why, like Waitangi, Waikato, it's water in my birth of place. In my province, why is river, is water. Rima, in many uh, uh, Pacific uh, countries, is called five. And also here in Maori, Rima. In Indonesia, we call it Lima. So many words that have the same pronunciations and the same meaning as Indonesians. And interestingly, we also share so many uh, similarities in terms of language and culture with most of the Pacific countries. Like in Samoa, I was so, so surprised when they said Langit Biru. Langit Biru. That, was in, that is in Samoa. It means blue sky because we say exactly the same thing. We say Langit Biru exactly like what is said by uh, our friends in Samoa. And also in terms of culinary, our people, especially in the eastern parts of Indonesia, they eat sagu, they eat sweet potato, they eat taro, and they eat breadfruit, jackfruit, and of course fish become the main staple of those people that live in the eastern parts of Indonesia. Talking about ethnic and culture, what is interesting also, you have Hongi here. And in the uh, West Timor, Hongi is also practiced up until now with exactly the same purpose. So exchanging of the air, exactly like the Maori do here uh, when, when they respect uh, uh, guests or uh, visitors from uh, other, other places. So now if you see the, the pie here, if you consider Indonesia as a part of the Pacific, that we then we constitute almost 40% of the total populations. Australia, 12.7%, New Zealand, 3.9%, Papua New Guinea, being the largest Melanesian uh, 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 country in the Pacific, constitutes 28.1%. And the rest of the countries, uh, the rest of the regions, constitute 2 to 0.4%. And that makes it 100%. <laughs> What about, uh, okay, Indonesia is a country of 270 million. Okay, if we take only the Melanesian and Polynesian part uh, of our fabrics, it's also 13 million. It's 13 million, way bigger than the rest of the populations in the Pacific. What does it mean? Uh, 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 putting Indonesia in the frame of this phi, you will know it economically in the later uh, pages. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to underline what was said by uh, Foreign Minister then, Mr. Winston Peter. 
in many occasions, he always said that Pacific is the most contested region in the world today. And I think that's true because uh, this is uh, proven by so many uh, initiatives that have been taken by uh, superpowers and countries in the regions. Like Australia, Australia has Pacific uh, Step Up, New Zealand has Pacific Reset, USA Pacific Pledge, China of course, they don't come with the word Pacific, but they have Obor Initiative, and then the UK has Pacific Outlift, ASEAN as a whole, we have Indo-Pacific, which is catered for the benefit of the countries in the, uh, in the Indian Oceans and also in the Asia Pacific. And Indonesia comes lately with Pacific elevations. This is not the song that I normally sing when I was young. Indonesia comes lately, right? So these are the pictures, ladies and gentlemen, of the interest shown by a lot of countries in the world, including the superpowers towards Pacific. The big question is why those countries, including Indonesia, put a big attention on the Pacific. Next. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, now I started touching the significance of uh, the Pacific for Indonesia. Economically, we see Pacific is a, pot uh, is, uh, a potential market. We have 10 million people here. If we exclude Australia and New Zealand, this region is, benefit is benefited by young demography. The people whose age between 20 to 30 years. And then the people in the Pacific, they have high interest in Indonesian consumer goods. I was so surprised when I visited Tonga and when I visited Samoa, in the breakfast time, they are so proud to consume our instant noodle, the cup noodle, cup indomie. And they're so proud of having it. And they were even proud when I said that I was the ambassador of Indonesia, and we ended up with taking pictures together with the product. So that shows you, ladies and gentlemen, how you know, indomie or instant noodle is one of the products that start uh, penetrating into Pacific market. And we have a very prospective market. And I hope in, in the fields of economic cooperation opportunity, of course, Australia and New Zealand are very important countries for our inbound investment and trade. And Pacific Island countries are also our target countries for our outbound investments and trade. So those are the facts that probably can give you easy pictures why Pacific is getting more and more important for Indonesia. Next. Now, how about the significance of Indonesia for the Pacific? Now, back to the, uh, the first or the second, uh, the, second, uh, the second slide. Indonesia's presence will make Pacific region a lucrative market because a combined GDP, if Indonesia is in it, then we are talking about a market or a group of countries with 2.4 trillion US dollar. And it is a vast single market of 300 million people. It becomes huge and it becomes very appealing for investors, for traders, for business people, and most importantly, for tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are living in a very uh, limited situation due to pandemic. Our, uh, as we know it, the best uh, uh, tourism uh, before the COVID was uh, uh, cruise. I live, I live in northern area. I have a very suburb view about, on, on Wellington. So what I enjoy before the pandemic is the come and going of the cruise ships. Now they vanish due to the pandemic. Now, it was the best way to enjoy the Pacific. And I think after the pandemic, it will remain the best way to enjoy the Pacific. The problem is that the destination 
has always been the same. It's New Zealand, Australia, and the Pacific. Now, what we are trying to uh, offer here is the inclusions of Papua New Guinea, the inclusion of Tasmania, and of course, the inclusions of the eastern parts of Indonesia. That what makes the Pacific more interesting from the spectacles of tourist operators. Next. Of course, as we all know, there are some issues in the Pacific. First, they have a big issue on the climate change. Uh, natural disasters come and go from time to time. They have a big issue on infrastructure due to their being remote from everywhere. They have a connectivity issue and they have a limited market. And they have limited resources. And Indonesia wants to be part of the solutions of the Pacific issues by introducing Pacific elevations. So Pacific elevations is a renewed vision and commitment. Why I call it renewed? Because long before the birth of Pacific Elevations, we already introduced a program called Pacific Engagements. And now we renew the concept, and then <clears throat> we put everything new to it to make it more perfect and more suitable, more suitable for the people and, the, country, and uh, the countries in the Pacific. So Pacific Elevation is a renewed vision and commitment of Indonesia. To the, to, uh, to the Pacific. So the first reasons why uh, we launched Pacific Expositions in Auckland during the Pacific Expo two years back, because Indonesia is the integral part of the Pacific. And we come here to focus on economy and development corporations through a lot of programs that we have uh, uh, provided and we will provide it and we will provide and we also promise to involve more business sectors in this area. What are we doing to tap the Pacific market, to elevate the presence of Indonesia, and to make Pacific more and more important for Indonesia? First, we do G to G. Uh, Karim has just said, uh, the first time ever, Indonesia appointed uh, someone to become the roofing ambassador, and it happens to be myself. So my job is actually to roof the region, but due to pandemic, I get stuck here in New Wellington. But I'm still roving virtually. I visit a lot of people, I visit a lot of countries virtually, because this, this pandemic should not make limitation for our creativity. And we are very active in doing bilateral relationship with each and every country in the Pacific. And we are also uh, active in regional and multilateral uh, meetings. We are very active as well in uh, business to business, people to people through a lot of programs that we have done, and an inter-parliament. Uh, before COVID, back in 2019, Indonesia managed to uh, uh, organize the first ever Pacific Parliamentary uh, Conference in Bali. We plan to do it every year, but we could not do it last year due to COVID, but we plan to do it. And uh, we do hope that the, the borders are reopened so that the concept of engaging all the parliamentarian in the Pacific can be resumed. We, Indonesia, are also uh, very active in engaging NGOs uh, in the regions and also uh, worldwide. Now, uh, <clears throat> Indonesia, through uh, uh, Indonesia's development corporations that started from 2014 until 2020, we have uh, allocated, we have uh, spent 22 million New Zealand dollars that we uh, distributed to some countries in the Pacific namely Nauru, Tuvalu, Solomon Islands, Fiji, and Myanmar, in form of grant, technical corporations, and uh, 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 capacity building programs. So per regions, if you look at the pie, bigger portions of our contributions 
and Cooperation Fund were, uh, was dedicated to uh, Asia Pacific, mostly to the Pacific countries. And uh, we also uh, created triangular cooperation or south-south uh, triangular cooperations. And under this uh, umbrella, since 1999, we have uh, distributed and we have conducted quite a number of programs like technical cooperations, human capacity, uh, building and so forth uh, in the fields of public management, fisheries, disaster risk management, youth and women empowerment. Indonesia as well, uh, <coughs> knowing that, uh, knowing the complexity of these regions and the dynamics that happens from now and then here in the Pacific, so it's, uh, we are compelled to be active in various uh, uh, regional organizations uh, that are still active and that used to be active here in the Pacific. In the Pacific Island Forums that consist of uh, 16 members, Indonesia has been a dialogue partner. We always attend PIF uh, meeting and conferences, and we are uh, very active in giving ideas, contributions, and thoughts towards the development of economy, and most importantly, uh, towards the development uh, of the prosperity of the people of the Pacific. We are associate member of uh, Melanes uh, Melanesian uh, spearhead groups, and uh, <clears throat> we also uh, created a Coral a Triangle Initiative, and uh, this is, consists of Indonesia, Malaysia, PNG, Philippines, Solomon Islands, and Timor Leste. And these forums discuss about food security, climate change, and marine and marine diversity. We are also, uh, uh, we also uh, created a Southwest Pacific Dialogue, whose members are Indonesia, Australia, PNG, Philippines, New Zealand, and Timor-Leste. And we were also very active in the Pacific uh, Islands uh, Development Forum. So that shows you the activeness of Indonesia in, this, in these regions through regional and multilateral uh, organizations. Now, this uh, map is a very uh, interesting, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, Indonesia and the Pacific are well covered by a lot of organizations that already exist. ASEANs that cover 10 countries. Okay. And then South Pacific Dialogue, as you said, that covers part of the ASEANs, uh, Indonesia, and then uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and the whole Pacific countries, and Pacific Islands Forum that covers part of the Pacific countries, including Australia, Indonesia, and New Zealand, and Melanesian, Melanesian Sparehead Group that covers a tiny part of the Pacific, and Coral Triangle Initiative uh, uh, on coral reefs, fisheries, and food securities that covers most part of Indonesia and some Pacific countries. So, uh, can, we, can we get back to the, yeah. Yeah. So, once again, this part of the world has been well covered and has been uh, the great attentions of uh, big countries like Australia, New Zealand, and uh, Indonesia. So talking about prosperity uh, in the future, I'm very confident to see that uh, Pacific will be very uh, prosperous countries and uh, the people will be uh, prosperous people as well with the help and the attentions given by a lot of countries in the regions. Now, uh, I would like to share a little bit about Indonesia's Indo-Pacific approach, uh, which was launched uh, two years ago. And uh, this is a very uh, a great concept, to, so to speak, uh, in order to ensure stability, uh, peace, and uh, yeah, stability, peace, and prosperity of the people of ASEAN. And also, uh, it also uh, a great program in order to create opportunities for all countries in Indian Oceans and Asia Pacific, which we call Indo-Pacific. 
So uh, our Indo-Pacific or ASEAN uh, Indo-Pacific is pretty much different than the other uh, Indo-Pacific because this Indo-Pacific is not singling out any single country and the priority is based on economy and creating prosperity of the people in the regions. Areas of cooperation varies namely from maritimes, connectivity, uh, trade, and also uh, uh, concentrated effort to achieve UN's uh, SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. So I would like to quote what was said by our president. ASEAN shall strive to strengthen cooperation with the Pacific regions built upon its cordial relations with New Zealand. ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific can be the foundation for cooperation between ASEAN and the Pacific countries. And it has been discussed in the meetings that involve head of states of the ASEAN and also Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Now, <clears throat> let me drink. Indonesia has been fully committed towards developing the economy and prosperity of the peoples. We understand that connectivity and market access have been one of the great issues, have been two of the great issues in the Pacific, for which we created a program which enables all the countries in the Pacific to interact economically with the rest of the Pacific, namely Indonesia, uh, Australia, and New Zealand. So the program that we launched two years ago called Pacific Expositions. Pacific Expositions is the first largest and the first comprehensive exhibition of trade, investments, and tourism that, would in, that invites all countries and territories in the regions to take part. It is in these programs, people, the business people, and the government officials from all countries in the region can meet up, interact, exchange ideas, and find opportunities in order to grab bigger market. So uh, <clears throat> this event is organized by Indonesia with the full support of New Zealand and Australia, participated by all countries and territories in the Pacific. And Pacific Exposition is in fact an avenue to market access for all countries and territories in the regions. The picture that you saw were the pictures of the first Pacific Ex Expositions that was held in Auckland two years ago. So the first Pacific Expositions was held on mid-July in Auckland. Thankfully, uh, participated by nine con 19 countries and territories. So almost all of the countries in the Pacific uh, took part in the first ever uh, expositions, attended by three heads of states, three foreign ministers, 14 ministers and high dignitaries, 600 business people, and over 5,000 visitors. Recorded transactions worth 100 million New Zealand dollars, or nearly 75 million US dollars. Gathering of experts and academicians to define one Pacific identity. So not only in this forum, we discuss about opportunity for business investment and tourism, but also for the first time ever, we invite we invited experts and academicians and experts, uh, culture experts, to sit together to define about Pacific identity. The result is still ongoing. I know it's not easy to come into a consensus on what Pacific culture and what Pacific uh, identity is all about. But the process is ongoing. Hopefully that in the next Pacific Expo, the uh, objective can be achieved. The Pacific Expositions, in observance, in observance of so probably a month before the APEC. So by doing this virtually, in fact, we will be having much bigger opportunities to invite more participants, 
both countries and also private sectors from the Pacific regions. We expect to have as many as possible companies, investors, traders, and importers from uh, the whole Pacific countries to join and interact with their partners from the rest uh, of the Pacific. Yeah. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the Pacific region has become one of the priorities in Indonesia's foreign policy. And it was said by our foreign ministers in the annual press statements early January this year. Indonesia and the Pacific countries share same and mutual interests to strengthen relations through bilateral and regional cooperations. And lastly, Pacific countries have important roles and must participate in the discussions of Indo-Pacific regional architecture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And uh, the Ambassador has kindly agreed to answer questions. So as I mentioned earlier, just as a courtesy to the speaker, if you're able to give your name and affiliation, that would be appreciated. So we'll open the floor up. Question at the back there. Hi there. My name's Michael. I'm a security consultant at Waikato Tahi Zealand Transport Authority. Uh, my question is, uh, to what extent can does Indonesia feel it can support the Pacific region when climate change increases the risk of disruption and name of refugees? Thank you. Uh, it is actually in the frame of the uh, cooperations that uh, we have offered to the uh, Pacific countries, but probably I forgot to mention it uh, specifically. Uh, climate change has been a big issue for Indonesia as well. And Indonesia, just like New Zealand, is located in the ring of fire. We are very familiar with uh, natural disasters like uh, earthquake, uh, flood, tsunami. And even uh, we began uh, 2021 with a lot of uh, natural disasters. And uh, based on that, because we have uh, a lot of experience in mitigating the disasters, we would like to share our expertise, knowledge, and experience with our brothers and sisters in the Pacific. And we have uh, started that program long, long time ago by uh, uh, organizing uh, quite a number of courses, 
uh, quite a number of training that were aimed at uh, our brothers and sisters in the Pacific. So we invited them to Indonesia for two weeks or even a month training. Uh, we share with them uh, our knowledge on mitigating the disasters like, uh, like flood uh, tsunami. Yes, uh, we have an issue ourselves uh, in terms of climate change like uh, uh, forest, forestry and then the uh, uh, plastic debris and the low knowledge of our peoples on the uh, uh, carbon uh, dioxide and for which you know, we also learn from a country like New Zealand who, who have been very excellent in that issue. So yes, uh, uh, we pay uh, a lot of respects to it and we put a big attention towards the uh, climate change. I think we have a question here from Peter Nichols. Thank you, Peter. Um, ASEAN has had an approach of not interfering in the internal issues of its members. Um, and I note recently that Indonesia has demonstrated some leadership in relation to Myanmar and making statements with that. Do you see this as a, as a slight change in ASEAN's approach of being a little more um, outgoing in its... Um, and its diplomatic approach with looking at internal affairs of other countries. Thank you, Peter. What actually happens in Myanmar right now, the, escalating, the escalations of uh, hardships and uh, uh, disasters towards the modern democracy uh, has been a big concern of Indonesia as well as uh, the rest of the uh, ASEAN countries. So <clears throat> we are tirelessly uh, building communications with our friends in uh, Myanmar uh, collab collaboratively with uh, uh, our friends from uh, the nine uh, ASEAN member states. Uh, one of the important facts which you have been very familiar with is the uh, ASEAN chapters in which we are not allowed to interfere, uh, interfere on the uh, domestic issues of the member states that what I'm not saying limiting ourselves but that is the foundations that we have to uh, respect fully but then again uh, there are many ways that we could we can do to normalize the situations and to bring the situation back to normal and to bring peace back into normal is through uh, uh, what you call it uh, dialogue so what our president has been proposing to Myanmar, and I guess it, will, it is uh, fully supported by all ASEAN countries, is uh, to establish a summit. We propose to make ASEAN summit to discuss about the uh, uh, way out of the uh, current uh, situations uh, in Myanmar. We have been uh, uh, saying our, uh, our uh, commitment loudly to the government of ASEAN to free all the detainees in uh, Myanmar today and uh, uh, tireless, uh, tirelessly encourage the military uh, power in Myanmar to uh, restrict to themselves from uh, 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 creating uh, further victims. Uh, what, what happens right now in Myanmar is already bad and we don't want it to be, to be worse than today. Thank you, we have a question at the front there. My question. Um, Kelly Jane Pritchard, um, International Development uh, Manager for WinTech, the Kelly Institute of Technology. Um, we work offshore a lot in the Pacific and, and in Indonesia, um, doing education type projects, particularly in the vocational field. I'm just wondering with your uh, bilateral engagement into the Pacific, are you at all interested in trilateral approaches using Indonesian and potentially New Zealand um, skills and expertise to help the Pacific Islands? Uh, thank you very much for the question. It reminds me of the commitments that uh, we have made uh, through uh, 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 engagements that we did last year. Uh, between Minister uh, Winston Peters and Minister uh, uh, Ratno Marsudi in Jakarta. So we make a lot of commitments 
and one of which, yeah, we make a lot of commitments, and one of which is the cooperation that should benefit the, the third party. So for instance, uh, like, uh, like uh, Pacific Expo, is the trilateral cooperations of Indonesia, New Zealand, and Australia, and benefited by all countries and territories in the Pacific. That's in a big scale, but in much simpler scale as well, Indonesia and New Zealand are uh, doing some projects uh, that will be benefited by uh, countries in the Pacific, one of which in the fields of uh, education. So for your information, Kelly, uh, some universities in Indonesia have provided uh, quite a number of uh, uh, scholarship, full scholarships for students uh, from the Pacific. Full scholarship, especially in the area of tourism and uh, fisheries. So when I say full scholarship, it's including the air tickets, lodgings, and the pocket money during their study in Indonesia. So that's our commitment uh, 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 bilaterally with, uh, uh, with uh, countries in the Pacific. And of course, when we do it trilaterally with New Zealand, it will be much bigger than those. Uh, thank you very much for the questions. I think the big, umbra, the big umbrella that will be benefited by countries in the Pacific is Indo-Pacific itself. And Indo-Pacific is a program that will be putting us away from all uh, military involvement. So uh, we uh, merely focus on economic development, uh, uh, economic development and then uh, prosperity and, and also uh, uh, maritime based economy. But uh, we never mentioned about uh, 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 military involvement. And by itself, Indonesia itself has a big engagement with New Zealand. We have some cooperations with New Zealand in terms of defense. But uh, mostly uh, uh, the programs that we do is uh, military uh, training and an exchange of ideas. And uh, we, even, we even planned before the pandemic to uh, uh, invite our uh, naval ships uh, to come, to, to, uh, to, come to, uh, to the Pacific as a floating hospital. So this is the, our, our plan to involve the military, but again, for the prosperity of the people and also to help uh, uh, develop the economy of the people here in, in the regions. I hope I answer your questions. With New Zealand, we are happy with the umbrella that we have right now. So there is no plan yet to uh, sign up uh, a bilateral trade agreement with Australia because what we have right now under the umbrella is good enough. And uh, with uh, Pacific countries, it's a very good question. This is probably, uh, we will start with uh, big countries like, uh, uh, in fact, with PMG, PNG we have. But I think uh, we, st we have to start uh, thinking about establishing much formal uh, uh, cooperations in trade with uh, big countries like Fiji, uh, Solomon Islands. Yeah. So uh, it's in the plan, though. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if you could expand on that a little bit further in terms of what does that actually mean? 
what, how does that, what is the purpose and what is the benefit for Pacific Island countries? How does that intersect with the illegal set of movement collected by the um, and, and what the advantages are and how you envisage that, that rolling out? Okay. I like your question very much. When I say I like your question very much, I find it hard to answer it. <laughs> Anna Paul, uh, we love diversity. Indonesia itself is a very diverse country. We love in diversity, but yet we are one as, uh, as a country. So uh, don't get me wrong by saying uh, our aim to create a Pacific identity. We uh, uh, fully honor the existence of diversity in the Pacific. But when I say uh, Pacific identity is that uh, all countries here in the Pacific are more or less come from uh, the same route. We are uh, from, uh, we are, uh, we belong to what we call it Austronesia. Yeah, Australasia, that's uh, the, Taiwan, the Taiwanese that traveled from ta Taiwan some thousand years back, and they traveled through ASEANs, and then end up in the Pacific countries. And that's the reasons why we see a lot of uh, similarities. We see uh, a lot of, uh, we share a lot of things in common. But then, I think that will be very interesting if we can come up with one Maybe not identity, but one, what do you call it? Can you help me out? Uh, this thing is uh, beautifully needed when you uh, promote the Pacific for tourism. So this is Pacific. This is Pacific. And uh, the discussion that took place in Auckland that involved a lot of academicians, uh, experts, and cultural people from uh, some countries in the Pacific, including in recent Australia, was uh, running very, very well. I mean, uh, uh, that was a very constructive meeting. Of course, uh, they didn't agree, just like you said. Uh, when, it's that, when, when we come to a point, identity, what are you talking about? But uh, sharing uh, the background of uh, culture of each country, and uh, we uh, ended up, uh, ended up uh, with uh, a communique, which was not approved until now. You know, it's a very delicate matter. Uh, it was done two years ago, uh, shortly after the uh, after the uh, after the Pacific Expo, and then we distributed the communique to all participating countries, and it is not approved until now. Just like you said, it's a very delicate matter. But our aim right now is to create like. Maybe not identity, and Paul, but something that uh, uh, lead people to understand this is Pacific. Okay. It's more for uh, economic and tourism aspect. Good question at the back. Robert, no, the yeah, question to what extent does Indonesia's investment in the Pacific interact with Chinese investments in the Pacific? <laughs> is Chinese ambassador here? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are a country that always promotes peace. We are a country that always promotes consensus. We are a country that always promotes uh, uh, inclusiveness, transpar transparency, and respects international law. So other actions other than that is not in the favor of Indonesia. So probably that's my question, that's my answer. Yes. Okay. Uh, Professor, as you said, you started to see Indonesia being part of the Pacific. How do you see the Indonesia looking at assisting the Pacific in its post-COVID economic recovery, and how do you um, see that happening? Yeah. Well, thankfully, most of the Pacific countries, if not all, are COVID-free due to their a strict lockdown, but of course lockdown create economic, uh, what do you call it, economic disaster. Yeah, New Zealand can manage that because you have a lot of money in the bank. You can do lockdown, you can close your borders, but we have to see what is going to happen to the Pacific countries a year from now if the situation remains like this. So what Indonesia has in the plan is 
creating assistance to the people in the Pacific, okay, especially in the fields of fisheries and tourism, which have become the backbone of economy of all countries in the Pacific, in preparations of post-COVID recovery. So it's about the time now for them to come to Indonesia to learn about uh, tourism management, fisheries management from our schools and universities in preparations for the recovery of their economy. Now, in terms of COVID-19, uh, it happens that our Minister of Foreign Affairs is the co-chair of COFAX. So she is in a great position to place something very real for members and non-members of COFAX for the distributions of uh, COVID uh, vaccines. Indonesia has been struggling with COVID-19 very bad. The number of infections and cases today is about 1.4 million people. But thankfully, the number of recovery is also very high, almost 88%. And we have been working very hard to uh, respond. And we learn a lot from uh, New Zealand on how to respond to COVID-19. But when the time comes, Indonesia will also provide and we also distribute the vaccines. We import four vaccines for, for uh, for, from four different countries, and we even develop our own uh, vaccines, and hopefully they will come into the market before the end of the year. The vaccine rollout has been running very well. We managed to have more than 35 million vaccines. So the first uh, vaccination uh, uh, was already done towards the uh, uh, people that works in the borders and people that works uh, in the health institutions. It has been done and they're waiting for the second vaccination will take place, I think two weeks from now. The uh, community vaccination is uh, already taking place right now. So yes, uh, we have a great commitment to uh, uh, distribute our vaccines both the ones that we import and the one that we develop. In fact, I forget to tell you, there is a forum in the Pacific Expo 2021, which is Health Forum. So this is the forums that will be dealing with the health infrastructures in the Pacific, for which we will invite uh, some prominent uh, speakers from Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, and also from WHO to share about uh, the infrastructure of health which has become a big issue as well in the Pacific. And also we'll discuss about distributions of uh, COVID-19 vaccines. Thank you. So we have time for one more question. There's one from the audience. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. Some really fantastic questions. Thank you, everyone. So just before I give my vote of thanks, I just want to note uh, an upcoming event with the National Office uh, on Monday the 29th of March they'll be hosting the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands mm. in Parliament and our colleagues at the United Nations Association will be hosting Colin Keating, a former New Zealand ambassador to the UN on Friday. Uh, so Robin Halliday who's here has some details if you'd like to see there. And a report for somebody. Thank you Robin. Uh, Indonesia is the world's third third largest democracy with a rapidly growing economy projected to be the seventh largest by 2030. Ambassador Tantowi, thank you very much for a very interesting presentation on Indonesia's priorities in the Pacific region. You've talked about the significance of the region to Indonesia. Indonesia is part of the Pacific, noting the provinces there, the Pacific elevation, and uh, Indonesia's work to strengthen uh, its connections with regional organisations like Pacific Islands Forum and Melanesian Spearhead Group. It's been really uh, fantastic and also good to see uh, Indonesia wanting to uh, get full participation from the Pacific in the discussion around regional infrastructure. And as well to see another uh, Pacific Expo happening this year, I think is great. I'd like to ask uh, all of you to join me in thanking Ambassador Tantoi for his address tonight.
Thank you very much, NZIIA, for giving me this opportunity once again. And thank you, Karim. And as a token of uh, appreciation for your coming and being such a great audience to me today, I bring my CDs. It's, uh, it's a very special CD. For those who have received that, don't take twice, okay? <laughs> but for those who haven't, feel free to get it. I call it special because I do it here. I did it here, involving uh, local musicians and involving three key stars, and they are all Iwis, and they are MPs, members of the parliament, and also uh, Minister of Defense then, Mr. Ron Mark and also one professional, one, uh, professional Maori singer. It's for you to grab for free. Just thank you very much. Thank you, Karim. Thank you.